The upcoming elections are probably the most important faced by Jamaicans since independence. There is the critical issue of which party is better placed to address the internal concerns of all Jamaicans and to effectively protect Jamaica's interests in an increasingly globalised world. There is also another equally important issue, and that is the potential effect on our democratic way of life as a result of a PNP or JLP victory. It is generally unhealthy for democracy when the same individual or political party remains in power for too long, a period of time. The JLP in particular and some persons of objective reasoning have concluded that 18 years falls within the definition of too long for a political party to remain in power. A political party or leader in power for too long is characterised by, among other things, a deficit of progressive ideas, an increased concentration of power in an individual, an attack on and the erosion of human rights, and a general slide into dictatorship. Even the most consistent critic will agree that this is not the case with this government. It is this need for change which is the JLP's most potent argument. It is to the JLP's chagrin that after 18 years in opposition, their best hope of forming the next government is by hoping to sneak in by default. Bruce Golding's JLP are desperately clinging to the hope that there will be sufficient stay-at-home potential PNP supporters and enough voters supporting the drowning man's straw change course JLP message. If the polls are to be believed, Bruce Golding's adaptation of the old PNP mantra, time for a change, is not winning sufficient converts. Bruce Golding has avoided and will continue to avoid posing the question any self-respecting opposition leader offering themselves as a viable alternative to an incumbent should pose. Bruce Golding will never ask the PNP the straight question, what have you done for the country? Because he is afraid of the answer. He's very afraid. It is not within his narrow interest of becoming Prime Minister at all costs to remind Jamaicans of the unprecedented transformation in infrastructure, telecommunications, investment and hope in Jamaica. Instead, he has transformed these elections into a race between Porsche's message of hope for the future and Bruce's peddling of fear, Porsche's search for solutions and Bruce's obsessive search for scandals, Porsche's realistic compromises in alleviating the economic burden of the most vulnerable in society and Bruce's one populist promise per day. It's a race between Porsche's record of perseverance when the going got tough and Bruce's record of multiple abandonment of his political parties and party faithful in his blinkered quest to suit his own political ambition. We must ask ourselves, what can so possess a man to become Prime Minister that neither the sanctity of family nor the sacredness of loyalty to the then elected lead party leader could check this ambition? What does it say of the temperament of a man who is willing to walk away on an historic event such as the swearing in of the first female PM, or any PM for that matter, over something as petty as an, un- as an unacceptable seating arrangement? Can we trust him not to pout and walk away in petulance from negotiations with international institutions should something not be to his distinct liking? Jamaica needs not a man of straw waiting for the next wind to change his course. He deserted the JLP in their time of need, abandoned the NDM condemning those who believed in his promises, subscribed to his dreams and believed in him, to an eternal political wilderness, sulked away from a ceremony as important as the swearing-in ceremony of Jamaica's Prime Minister. Is such a man ready for a higher office? Can Jamaica trust him with our welfare, or will he sulk and crawl away when we need him most? In the face of adversity and pressure, true leaders do not give up. Tech sleep, Mark dead. Unable to present workable alternative policies and his JLP as an accepted alternative, Bruce Golding has decided to instigate change through an insipid cocktail of fear and promises. His strategy could best be summarised as kill them with promises and frighten them. Promise them free education. Promise them free health care. Promise freedom to illegal taxes. Free traffic police, free this, free that. Frighten them with trafigura. 
Frighten them with Portia. Frighten them with scandals both real and imaginary. Frighten them, frighten them, frighten them with the future. But don't be know who for frighten. Because Bruce Golding does not even need to tell the nation how he will finance these pipe dreams because, like the rest of the country, we know it will not happen. Jamaica needs not free education, but quality, affordable education. Not free health care, but quality, accessible health care. The JLP still remembers how they were abandoned in their time of greatest need. Those in the NDM who sacrificed everything will never forget the pain of the abandonment while he was still an executive of the party. The meeting noted that while Mr Golding has used every opportunity to assure the NDM and the public at large that he would not be returning to the JLP, he has nevertheless mysteriously done so without communicating even a single word to the NDM executive of which he is still a member. And that's a quote from the NDM press release on 26 September 2002. His promises are nothing but a bunch of platitudes. Like he did to the poor supporters in the NDM, he promised them and promised them and promised them up to the ninth hour that he would not desert them. In the end, Bruce fooled up a whole heap of people, struck a deal with the JLP and run away left them. The JLP deserves better. Jamaica deserves better. Portia has shown resilience. She has never abandoned Jamaicans. Bruce is a fair-weather driver prone to abandoning the bus when the going gets tough. He is just not ready. Portia is better placed at this time to continue Jamaica's march ahead. Don't be fooled.